this has a little fuel pump issue. It started with 100,000 miles, so I guess that's expected, right? So, anyway, I'm just telling you right now to to a, a shop down the street. You know, my neighbor recommended the store. So they, they're going to fix it quickly and get it back on the road tomorrow, you know, just before the weekend. So I've been just, you know. And, you know, these cars need to be maintained. You know, the key has been great. You know, it's got it used, you know, no shame. It's, uh, it's one car. I and I shared it for three years. You know, so, but now, you know, you know, got upgraded us, so we're good. You know, but, you know, we're... You know, no, there's no, you know, pushing the kid for three years together. She dropped me off for work, picked me up at night, and I dropped home, you know, like, we did that, you know, but, and we stayed in one bedroom. We stayed in one bedroom apartment for, what, close to three years, you know, and before that, it was a studio. We stayed in that studio for a year, so now, several houses later, you know, it's still the same thing, you know, you're still thankful, you're still grateful, and you know, God is still doing his thing. And, you know, the cars are better now, we're on the GLS and the C, you know, you know, um, and as the blessings grow, the cars gotta grow, every house has gotta grow, the neighbors gotta, you know, like everyone else around you gets blessed also. That's always the blessing, that's always the prayer. May your blessing be big enough for you to help others, you know. It's not necessary for us, but for those that come after us, you know. So that's where I see it. You know, we're here, we're pulling up here. Uh, so, that, you know, sometimes, you know, my, my content may not be about glamour. It may not be about nice suits and, you know, glamour and luxury, you know. This is just reality. We're bringing this to the store to get it done. And content got to keep going, you know. We got to keep filming. This is where we are. So my boy's gonna pull up here and do his thing, you know. Um, you know, I don't know how he's gonna move, but let me go here. I'm back over here, you know. So. Guess what? We came up here and then the mechanic turned the key on. Guess what? Testimony time. The car started up by itself. So now they're just trying to check it out to see what's going on, see if if God is working on that. But God already worked. I came in here with the, with the tow truck and got here and basically the car is fine. So we're going to drive it back home. But I came with the band, so I can't. I have to drive this band, so they will drop this up and pick this up later. That's how I do it. So, uh, in the rough today, you know, just jumped out, you know what I'm saying? I picked the car to, to got it towed from the house to, uh, to, to mechanic just to look at the key a little bit. So, guess what? Got it towed. First of all, when it stopped last week, we thought it was, uh, we thought it was, um, the alternator, right? It was in turnover, right? So, fine. And then, left in the house for a few days. Tow company came. The guy, the guy that was supposed to take it to mechanic a few days ago, just played me, you know, just didn't show up, you know. He said, wait an hour. I was already with, I already waited an hour. And he said, but it was time for him to be there. He said, oh, you got to call us a, a, an hour ahead. I was like, listen, bro. I'm not even gonna tell you that I called you two hours ago, so let's forget about it and bounce. So um, today I called this other company, uh, Sierra Towing in Lancaster. Brian shows up within 30 minutes. They told me they'd be there 30 minutes, like 27 minutes out of the house. They're like, yo, let's roll. They paid them 70 bucks, they give them a tip. You know, they said, I don't want a tip. Anyway, point is, dope company got me. The guy, the guy that came to tow the car said to me, it's not alternator. I said, well, Triple E said it's alternator. He said, I'm telling you it's not alternator. That's number one. Number two, I, I think it's a fuel pump. So we, we get in the car, he stows it over there, um, gets to the muffler shop, 
pull the cat down, right? That's what I was telling earlier. And then, <laughs> the mechanic turns the car, it turns over. The cat turns and comes on. So I'm like, okay, what's going on here? Because we came here to fix this, but the guy already fixed it. So I told the tow truck guy, yeah, listen, the car is better. He started. So he said, it must have been the fuel pump because as we were jacking the car around, that could have cost uh, the fuel pump to, you know, jack a little bit and get mixing to get mixing with the ignition area. So anyway, that's fixed, but the, he's going to keep it for a few days just to make sure we, we don't have a problem again. So the car is still at the shop, you know, and hope, maybe Saturday I'll pick it up, you know, should be good. But anyway, um, we got talked about politics and Brian and I were talking about politics. It was like, you know, a young guy, probably 35, 36, white guy, tall, you know, uh, busy, just grinding, right? So I'm saying, okay, listen, what's up? You know, so we're talking history. I talk about history in Nigeria, London, and he talks his history. He's from Lake Elizabeth. I'm like, yeah, my wife and I have a property in there, Lake Hughes. So, you know, um, it's the same place. Like he, so he starts breaking down the policies of Lake Hughes. The, you know, one thing about Californians is they give information. He told me about a golf course that's in front of our property and told me that basically that course has been sold four times and the golf course actually owns the aqueduct that's around the same area. So Lake Hughes, the actual lake belongs to the golf course and our house is next, it's in front of the lake, in front of the golf course. And so he said to me, listen, the problem with that property is, with that area is, you, first of all, you know, if you live in a high desert, you're going to need to deal with propane and, you know, septic tank, that's fine, that's not, but then you gotta, water is an issue, water is expensive in the queue, I did not know that when we bought that property, so, even though it's vacant land, but water is an issue, so, if water is expensive, you don't want to invest too much money into that property, you want to keep it low, so, he gave me that insight, but he's the second time I was with a person that lived in the area, and they spent some time to teach me about the area, and then when it was done, he was like, I'm going to leave California very soon. I was like, why? You know, so I said to him, listen, I'm from Africa, right? And to be honest with you, I love America, but I'm from Nigeria, right? So whatever, you know? So he said, yeah, but for me, I can't say that I'm from California, right? And the politics of you know, the governor is really making me mad. I said, okay, break it down for me, because I'm not feeling you, so help me understand. He said, listen, take gun laws, for instance, right? We both have guns, right? But now they're taxing us. They're taxing, they, this an insurance they expect you to get this to the California. If you San Jose started this issue, gun laws, right? So they want us to pay insurance for having guns. That's gonna to turn to taxes because basically every sector of California society is so taxable, it makes it unbearable for you know, incentives for businesses to be in the state and also for people to even live here with that. Our taxes are with 9.5%. And on top of that, every, it was paid for every single thing. So he was mad about that. Now, you know, I understand. He's, I don't want to say it's racial, but he's a white guy. He's mad about white guy stuff. I'm mad about black guy stuff. <laughs> I thought, listen, I'm concerned about employment, my people. I'm concerned about, you know, internal racism, you know, inst institutional, you know, um, prejudice. I mean, I'm interested in those kind of things. I'm not worried about what. And then when it comes to guys, you know, your boy Biden cut the. Excel pipeline project, I guess what's it gonna be? I said, yeah, I feel that one too. That's a black-white issue. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a general issue. You feel it, I feel it. And when prices go up in gas, like five bucks, especially when you have luxury cars. This Benz right here is like 91, you had a pump 91, that's five dollars a gallon. Vanguard is not a passenger's car. This car, 65, you're there, you got it, like 14, like 12 gallons. But when you drive, when you're driving a like passenger's car, it's $120 to fill the tank. It may not even fill it all the way. You probably have to push 125. So I understand that pipe. That, 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 that is, listen. My dad is a work for Shell Patrol in 33 years. My sister too. So my parents have slaved to work for this gas. And guess what? When I see them jack it up in California, it makes me mad. You go to a gas station, you can't even pump the full gas. So, you get, you know, I understand what he's going through, what he's saying. You know, I get it. Uh, but anyway, um, that's a little rant. Anyway, I stuff to do. I gotta go cook. I, had, I left some salmon on the, uh, on the grill, on the, um, on the, uh, on the stove. 
fact it came out soon. I gotta do some work out here first before. The neighbors are crazy out here today. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go in here and uh, finish cooking. And step out, go pay some bills. And the post office will be open until about four. So, ladies and gentlemen, sign out. See you guys later. I'm gonna add this to the video I shot in the, in the shop so it can make sense to you. Okay. Have a great one. Take care.